My name is Tineka and welcome back to the show, A Zimbo in America. And today I have a very, very special guest. My friend, my mentor, my director, my producer, my writer, a good friend of mine, my sister, Rumbi Katita. Rumbi, thank you so much. My guy. Thank you. Comrade. How's it going? I'm good, man. Thank Excellent. you for making time. No, always for you. Always. Always. Saka, as you say, America, we here in Boston, Harvard, Cambridge. Mm. Hey, it's, a, it's been a great experience here. Uh -huh. And I want to tell you, I'm here for a fellowship here at Harvard that I don't think a lot of people know about. And it's the Manika Fellowship at the Hutchins Center for African and African American Research. And uh, it's a very special opportunity because it's set aside for Zimbabweans and Southern Africans to come to Harvard and to work on projects that forward our narrative, our stories. And that's something that you don't get every day. So it's a great opportunity oh, to be congratulations, here. Congratulations, mm. congratulations. So are you the only one from Zimbabwe who's here? I'm the only Manika fellow. I'm not the only <coughs> person from Zimbabwe. There's quite a lot of okay. <laughs> incredible Zimbabweans on uh, this campus. Okay. But I am the current Manika fellow. Okay. And there will be another one after me. Well, congratulations. Thank again. you. All right, so to, to get us started, um, Rumbi Katedza is a name that's been there in the industry for a very long time in many capacities, in many genres of the media industry. Who is Rumbi? And you may, you could just introduce yourself. Mm. I know you, I know you as yeah, aware of multiple heads, but um, just to give us how you would mm. introduce yourself. Yeah. Basically, I mean, I'm Rumbi and I'm a storyteller. That's about it, you know? And everything, all that other stuff, the layers that you're talking about, mm -hmm. they all siphon into being a storyteller. So I'm assuming you're, gonna, you're talking about, I have a past in radio presenting. Yes, yes, yes. Started off in radio presenting in Canada and then again at the then Radio 3, which a lot of your viewers would probably not even remember. Mm -hmm and then moved into production. Production did a lot of work on big um, uh, American and European productions that were shot in Zimbabwe. Did a lot of work on those and uh, segued into distribution. And I then started to run a film festival in Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe International Film Festival. Yeah, that's where we met, yeah. Which was a perfect opportunity. I mean, those of you who attended would have seen Tendekai front and center at Thank that you. festival. Uh, and then after doing my master's in filmmaking, I then started a small production house, uh -huh. and we've been producing quite a lot of narrative and documentary content over the last 10 years. Oh, that's great, that's mm -hmm. great. And I'm happy to be a part of uh, some of your productions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you should probably like show some snippets and stuff <laughs> of some of the stuff you, you're, this guy's an actor, okay? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to you, Rumi. Thanks to you. So I guess let's just start. I, I, I'll, I'll take it from where we first met. I remember walking up to your office mm -hmm. to Canterbury Road. Right. And uh, I was referred to you by my dad. Okay. And he said, you know what? Go and see this, uh, this lady. She, she will definitely help you. And yes, that has happened over the years. You've helped me and you've helped me shape my career. You've helped me shape what I've wanted to always do, you know, and thank you for that. So, but I mean, I would say it's all you. <laughs> I was just there for the ride, but I always tell people it really is. It's yeah. all you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so Zimbabwe International Film Festival was a platform where a lot of films were showcased, a lot of um, international local films, etc., and a lot of workshops that were done there to help filmmakers in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. You having been at the helm of such an organization when you started and maybe up to now, how has film grown and or developed in Zimbabwe? Since I left the festival. Yeah, we yeah let's just, yeah, we from, from the festival. You know, what's been interesting has been the emergence of a lot of new voices in film in Zimbabwe. Uh, we obviously a nascent film industry. We're not a, his, a, film, a film industry with a huge history. Okay. So what's exciting about being involved with it, and I always say this, is that if you're involved, you are essentially a pioneer and you start to determine what the, fest, the, the, 
the industry will be in the future. And what's happened is we've had a lot of young people who have started to infuse their energy and their stories into it. And I'm really glad that we have started to move away from this I'm trying to make the next blockbuster. Okay. I want to make a Hollywood film because that's not who we are. We're a, we should be about telling our own stories and putting our stories at the center so that people watch our stories and then our stories travel. And we can then export our culture to the rest of the world because we have got the most amazing stories to tell. I mean, in a country that gave birth to the great Zimbabwe and the empires of, of, of the past, there's so much that we have to share with the world. So there have been a lot of young people coming back into the country who are involved in the industry. And it's also been the transitioning of understanding that to be a filmmaker, you don't necessarily have to make a big budget feature film. So there have been a lot of, there's been a lot of short form content that has come through. We have struggled in the country because we don't have broadcasters. We've got one national broadcaster, which is a bit ridiculous. I mean, almost 40 years into independence and we only have one national broadcaster. We should have loads of broadcasters commissioning work so that our industry can thrive. But in the absence of that, we've seen a lot of short form content on the internet that's, okay, that's yeah. developed. And I'm loving what I'm saying because it really goes to the core of our own stories. And, um, and sat satire has been great. Oh yeah, it has been great. You know, if you've been looking at some of the people who've emerged like Bus Stop and it's been really fun to see that emergence and how that is starting to shape the films that we are going to be making. Um, and also being able to make quality for less. So we're in a digital age. Zimbabwe came from a history of celluloid, making film actual, okay. like uh -huh. film, film. We had uh, one of the only film processing units, or at, I think at one time the only film processing unit in Southern Africa. You know, yeah. CFL, Central Film Lab, but then when it closed down, we, we were able to, to, to kind of uh, leapfrog into a new era of digital. We didn't go through all the hiccups, this and that. We went straight to digital, which is also good because you can then start doing things for much less. You can really um, hone in on the story and then the budget for all of the technical stuff isn't as cumbersome as before. So it's great to see people trying with new forms. I would like to see more of an emergence of quality films than, quantity. than just quantity, okay. because I believe that our stories will travel and they can travel far. Okay. Zimbabwe kuna nyaye exposure, look by exposure. What's your take on my corporates? Anoti, you want to do a video for the promotional feature? Mm -hmm. Or your friend who, an artist, Anu Imba, Anu Chaja, let's say, Anu Chaja, Maria Kat, but corporate not to, I will call it the function, we don't look by exposure. What's your, what do you have to tell these corporates or these people who say, do not pay exposure? Because mm -hmm. that gets to me. What do I have to say? Yeah. Exposure doesn't pay the bills. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. It's just simple. Exposure doesn't pay the bills. And a lot of these companies will have a budget for this. If you're going to have the party and you know you want somebody to perform for you, where's the budget? It's part of the party, you know, because in a lot of these circumstances, those corporates probably need you more than you need them because they're like, oh, this is a big band. I want them to come play. But what an insult to say, come and pay for exposure. I'm like, will exposure pay for this person's rent? Nope. Will exposure pay for this person's child's school fees? Preach sister. Come on. I don't think so. So yeah. we need to get past that. And we also need to appreciate and start to name our value. We really need to name our value. Know how much you are worth. And over the years, I've lost a lot of jobs. I know because I've said, this is how much I expect to be paid. And I've been told to my face, well, so-and-so is charging this message. So I say, you must go with so-and-so. I mean, maybe that's what your budget is. That's cool. But this is how much I do it for. Because I know that I'm going to give you a certain quality, a certain value. And I'm also going to add my experience in terms of what can be done afterwards and make suggestions and recommendations based on that, you know, in my networks. So we as artists must be very clear about our value 
and people who come in trying to pay with exposure, if, unless I can deposit that exposure into my bank and pay for something. <laughs> Danai Gurira. Mm -hmm. Danai Gurira has done well this year. Danai Gurira, I mean, over the years she's done well. Yeah. But I, for me personally, I think this year, last year, okay, starting last year, um, when Wakanda Wakanda was released. Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever was released, and now we're waiting for the end game on Friday. Mm hmm. How do you feel knowing that a Zimbabwean, Danai Gurira, is up there with Hollywood's A-listers? Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel and any message to Danai and the rest of Zimbabweans who are waiting for anything? I, I am so happy for Danai. She's such a great person and she's so invested in people, not just her craft. She's like, she's really, she's taken the time and worked on her craft and, and she's also invested in other creatives through her Almasi Arts Project. Uh, yeah. And I respect her for that and the kind of work that she's doing to, to forward the cause, not just of her, using her position to also forward other people's causes. And I have so much respect for her and what she's done in Hollywood. I spend a lot of my time working on an organization that I co-founded called Amasi Arts. This organization works to empower the African artist by conducting exchange programs between American artists and Zimbabwean artists, taking Americans to Zimbabwe for teaching, mentorship, and professional engagement, and bringing Zimbabwean artists to the United States to be mentored and trained. And I would also like to see us, you know, having our being excited about our artists doing really well on things on the continent okay and not just in hollywood you know let's let's celebrate when somebody does something exceptionally well Everywhere. uh african movie academy awards let's celebrate and while they're alive too oh yes you know that's the thing uh, it's really celebrate let's celebrate everybody's achievements like i'm a really big fan of mokumba to I me saw, i saw you i saw you Pictures of you. I went to their concert. Okay. You know, they. Even my brother Noah was you, there. As well. Yeah. <laughs> they are magical. And, like, to me, they're a national treasure. We should be uh -huh. celebrating them now uh -huh. and, like, for what they're doing. And they're, they're raising the flag high. And I saw how they were interacting with, with people. And they're great ambassadors for the country. Danai Gurira is an incredible ambassador for the country. And she's a woman who's doing so much in a highly competitive industry. And she's up there, you know? Mm -hmm. So let's celebrate all of the achievements that we have. I, I get really excited like when uh, the South Africans like celebrate Brenda Fassi and stuff, and yeah. like there's all this stuff that they do in terms of monuments and remembrances, and, but also celebrating people while they're still there and, and saying, this is who we are as Zimbabwe. Lastly, on a sad note, yeah. Zimbabwe lost its own superstar. Mm. Mm. And a lot of people had different experiences with Oliver Mtukudzi. A lot of people interacted with Mtukudzi, some personally, some through the radio, through his music, through mm. watching him on stage. Through, I remember at uh, ZIF 2013, when I was the venue manager, I actually walked in from his car. I was his personal chaperone from his car to yeah. the stage where he um, where he was presented with an award and at his I think 2013 2014 one of his birthday bashes I was a stage manager mm. so I interacted with him almost on a personal level mm. and it was a great class for you as a media practitioner mm. as a Zimbabwean how did how did that mm. yeah it was hard like being in a different country when that happened because I had seen him before I left Zimbabwe for my fellowship and over the years he's been so supportive because if anybody understands film and how much of a grind goes into film it's it's Oliver Mtukudzi I mean Neria was massive yeah. and that song just it transcends Zimbabwe, it transcends, it's just...
people from I've seen people from so many different countries who have no idea what the so what it's means. about yeah. who will be singing the song um, and it's it's, oh, it's Olympic, I, should, yeah. I think someone um, on Twitter uh, was saying um, Neria is a love song. I thought Neria was a love song because oh, wow. the way he sang, oh. I actually dedicated it to my, <laughs> to my girlfriend because I thought it was a love song. So I think that's how powerful yeah. that person felt. It's an song. emotional song. Yeah. It's like so emotional. And then over the years, he has been so supportive of me and the work that I have done. You know, I've visited him at Pakare Pai and seen him at various performances and He's always been very encouraging, and that's what I've heard from a lot of other artists about how encouraging he is. And I once did um, a documentary about uh, a community in uh, the east of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and I approached him and I said, can I use your song? And he said, you can use it, and at no cost, because I believe in the work that you're doing. How many people would do that? And he knows that his work is valuable, uh -huh. you know? But he also believed in the value of the work that we do as artists. As artists. And, you know, enough respect for Oliver Mutukudzi because he traveled the world, mm -hmm. all right? He traveled the world and he saw a lot of things, but he always brought his knowledge home and invested in building not just the creative industries, but in building our nation and keeping the story of Zimbabwe at the fore. What was your favorite song? What, what is your favorite song? That's a hard one. I've got like a whole string of them. <laughs> you know, my, my first favorite song when I was really young, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you're going to remember this one. Try me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so I was young, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because my parents had that album. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I really loved uh, Todi oh, mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, and probably after that, every other song that he ever did. Okay. And at the time that he passed, I had been talking to him about you know, working with him on one of my upcoming films as well. Oh. And he had committed a song to the film, which, uh, you know, we, we hope to still include in that. And Walter, his manager, has been very supportive too. Okay. And I just have the utmost respect for Olam for Mtukuzi and his family and the people around him. Okay. Because it was a knock to us, but imagine to the people who were the most closest to, to him. Hmm. Rumbi, my guy. Comrade, <laughs> I know this conversation. We're not doing justice to it because Tabu just a couple pieces here. Uh -huh. I know we can go on and, on and on and on and on because yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. But thank you so much for taking time, for making time. We are Pachiro Wachedu, and it's good that uh, we've had this conversation. Yeah, from one filmmaker to an expiring filmmaker, and uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Mm -hmm. And please bring this knowledge back home. That's right. And so that Patno Sangana, you know, will make something big that yeah. we'll bring back to Boston and we'll show them like, yo, do such an idea. Always, Comrades, always. See you so in the DMs. Thank you, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making time for, to watch a Zimbo in America. My guest today was my friend, my producer, my director, Rumbi Kateza, who's uh, here in Boston. Rumbi, thank you once again. Thank you. And to the crew behind the scene, Mr. Noel Samu, my brother, thank you very much for making time to help us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Mm -hmm.